What's going on, guys? My name is Chris Acevedo, and you're listening to the Real Talk Podcast. This is the first episode of the first season of the show, and I would like to welcome my guest, Justin Murray. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for coming through, man. Yeah, of so, course. Happy to be here. Yeah, now tell us about who you are and like what you do, and yeah, let's hear your story. Sure, man. Absolutely. So uh, I'm a filmmaker and photographer. I've been doing freelance since 2019 full-time. Um, I've always been into video and photo since I was like a kid and it was a passion of mine and um, figured out that you could do it professionally. And uh, yeah, I've been doing it full time for the last like three or four years now and I love it. I, w- I wouldn't be doing anything else. Honestly, same. <laughs> yeah. So Good. one of my questions I have is uh, how was your 2022 journey been as a creative? Yeah, I mean, 2022 was a year of growth for me. Um, there's a lot you know, with COVID that kind of like stirred everything up and, um, caused a lot of like just chaos. And, um, I definitely didn't want to be caught like with my pants down, so to speak again. (laughs) Um, 2020 was, was crazy. And so, yeah, over the last few years, just been building and building. And this year, um, I was kind of able to like take a step back and realize some of the systems that I needed to build on and, um, just some of the goals that I want to like kind of realign myself with. Um, so yeah, it's been good. Just kind of trying to strategize for 2023. And that's pretty much what this year has been all about. Yeah, no, I think uh, 2023 is going to be a great year for videographers with the direction of like the camera industry and just how fast uh, things are growing, for, like sensors and, uh, you know, the new technology that's just being released every couple of months. Yeah. I swear I, it's like a new camera every month. It's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, you know, there's always been camera companies releasing products and um competing against each other for better things but like dude sony's been coming out with some crazy cameras lately and sony, technology sony yeah. 75 or r5 uh i don't know i don't know what uh is it a new one so i know they um they involve aside from like the eye tracking that, that they have already implemented they also included um ai technology really the sensor yeah i didn't even know that really yeah no it's been uh pretty cool to to see what Sony's been doing for the mm-hmm. last like couple of years, they've been killing it for the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, and then they just uh, was it the FX3 that they just dropped? So FX30, FX30, yeah. yep. So it's a micro uh, four thirds, but so you know that's I love shooting uh, full frame. Yeah, I, 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 we were talking yeah. about that. I don't know if I would ever go back to not shooting full frame just because of the pure like range that you get. But. Oh, I can't go back. Another question I have is: Is there anything that's challenged you this year? Oh man, a lot has challenged me this year. Um, I'd probably say the first thing that comes to mind is just dealing with handling a business and trying to evolve as creative. But then also like the other side is just like getting your, you know, your life, you know, like dealing with life, right? Like um, personal stuff and trying to just like build all of that at the same time while continuing on like a upward trend. Um, That's probably been my biggest difficulty this year, but like trying to balance, you know, your personal and then also your business life yeah it's it's hard because like as a freelancer you don't have uh a boss you don't have anybody coming and and holding you accountable you got clients that'll hold you accountable yeah. and um, <laughs> for me like i don't have a team <clears throat> for my business at least and those are some of the systems that i'm looking to improve on in the coming year get you know more shooters and editors to kind of help me expand and then obviously you have more room for growth higher ceiling but um yeah, you don't have anybody necessarily holding you accountable. So I've found for me personally that it like is really tricky to, to balance that. Yeah. Um, even four, four years in now, it's, I still find it really difficult sometimes. And then personal things come up and new business comes out. You want to always be networking and on top of it. So it's tricky. So, um, personally, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking to do moving forward is build out my team. That's awesome, man. And, uh, yeah, I hope you, hope you find that for your business. Thanks, man. Uh, Of course, of course. Um, let me see. What is your opinion about the current state of being a creator slash videographer? I feel like it's kind of blending into one mm-hmm. in the sense of like, you know, creating content for TikTok and then versus like a videographer. Like, mm-hmm. do you think, um, like, what's the scope of it in your opinion? Yeah, I think they're all different goals, right? Like if you're, I I like what you said, like they all kind of get blended now. Like there's a, there's not a, a, a distinct differentiation between like somebody who just has a camera and they're like going out and filming TikTok videos and or even a professional who has like a nice camera say they're a real estate agent and they're making their own content like I wouldn't necessarily call that person a filmmaker 
I would, maybe I'd call them a content creator, but really I would just say that they're like a business owner. They're doing the necessary marketing necessary that steps. everybody should be doing. I mean, it's 20, it's almost 2023. And like, if you're not doing video on social media, you're definitely at a deficit. Like you're not, uh, you, you need to be doing that. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, you know, for me, like I see it as you have that group of people and then you have other people who are actually like interested in the art, interested in, um, the storytelling and, and creating something out of yeah, nothing. Crafting rather. a story to then basically make it make sense. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, rather than having like a business scope perspective, you know, they'd be more like in, interested in like the storyline and, and the character archetypes and stuff like that. The so. motivations and what have you. Yeah, yeah. So there are different goals for different, like different avenues for different goals. So um, I, w- I would probably just say that, yeah, you'd have to make a differentiation on, you know, what is your goal? And like, I think anybody like if you know, that's the thing, if you want to be a filmmaker and like, you're not, um, you know, like if you, if you consider yourself just a videographer, like for the most part of the work that I do, I'd call myself a videographer because, you know, I'm not creating a, a script and a storyboard and, and creating these like character archetypes and trying to, yeah, yeah. right. B- you know, the, the subplots aren't really there. Um, but you know, with like commercial filmmaking, like it does take a level of like being able to tell a story because you have to work with people who have never been on camera before for the most part mm-hmm. um who are super nervous and they have all these lights on them oh, and yeah. cameras they're and like, oh, like they're like frozen the moment that you press record yeah and i mean <laughs> i get it too it's like you know i've been there like i we were just talking about before we started like the yeah. first time it's funny that um i'm your first guest <laughs> yes. on your podcast because you were my first guest on my podcast and yeah it's just you know it's a nerve-wracking experience when you don't do it often and you're not comfortable in front of the camera um so it's just like a wall you gotta break. Yeah. It's like for me, it's like a skill that I've had to like I'm still trying to break. Yeah. Um, like for example, when I started my career, uh I used to be like a really shy person. But one thing I've realized when I was like starting was like, okay, like if I wanna make it into this industry, I need to break down these walls. So I started going to networking events to actually not just learn the lingo, but also kind of at the same time break down those walls. And by the fourth or fifth event that I went to, this was when I was like 22. It changed my life and it just made me comfortable to, you know, speak to any type of business owner, any type of creative. And honestly, you have no fear in speaking to them because like, you know, you can only go as far as you want to push yourself. I love that. Yeah. And it's been a journey. It's been, I'm still learning, you know, like every year it's like something new I'm still trying to uh, achieve. Yeah. Now, how have you like worked out of um, that mindset of like, like for me, for example, too, I, I definitely resonate with that. It's hard to put yourself out there when you're not feeling confident or you're not whatever. Um, so how have you personally like worked with that? I think one thing that helped me was when I was also starting, I also thought about, I guess, working with another creative that's, you know, that's been in the industry a bit longer. Like, let's say like a mentor, essentially. Mm-hmm. I think having a mentor is awesome because it also just kind of you're able to like learn from that person there's gonna be people that also look at you the way that you used to look at that person Mm. for example um there's two people that i i hire for like some some shoots when i need like extra help and it's funny because they kind of look up to me as i mentor and i didn't even realize it until they told me i'm like wow like i didn't know that i was viewed in that yeah you know what i mean yeah no i do that's got to be a good feeling, though. It's been pretty cool. I mean, I remember that exa- we talked about this topic on my on the podcast that we yeah. did last year. And go like, check that out, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> the Namra, it's up there. The, the no, Namra podcast. Shout out Namra podcast. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yep. But I just I remember you were talking about that, dude. And it's like, <clears throat> it's mentors are huge. Mentors are like it's like a little cheat, right? It's like a little shortcut. Like you still got to do the work, but you're not uh, wasting. You save a lot of time. Because you see what other people tried to do and failed at or what they did wrong. Maybe you could do better at. Um, so, yeah, mentors, I agree, man. It's huge. And that's awesome that you're looked at as a mentor for people now, too. It's uh, something I never thought would ever happen. Mm-hmm. But let me see. Another question I have is, uh, how do you feel about filming in 9 by 16 like the iPhone aspect ratio? <laughs> yeah, I think with anything, it's just about your goal. Um, I when it, Actually, it's funny you asked that. When it first came out, like when tiktok the tiktok but mostly like the 9 by 16 aspect ratio was really starting to get dominant in the social media space like now you can't scroll without on instagram it. without seeing an yeah. instagram <laughs> reel or um tiktok obviously all 9 by 16 so um at first i was like you know you 
you get like such a like small a, window you don't annoying. yeah and it's like you know you don't have the the full range that you're meant to have but i think it's like anything it depends on your goal right like i think for commercial work it's awesome because you can just stick somebody right in front of a camera shoot them really right clean yeah and then just just crop it in or if you shoot it um, vertically whatever but um i'd say like creative stuff for me i it's hard. It's uh, really hard because <laughs> like it, the, the director or the whoever made the film is like wanting or I mean, not always. Right. Like if you made it a nine by 16 on purpose, but for the most part, like you want to see the whole range of the, the view. Like yeah. if you like for like what I mean by that is like if you if you create a video and then you crop it to nine by 16, you lose so much of resolution, the information, yeah. the storyline, right. all that resolution, too. But it's uh, it's about the goal for me. Yeah, not for sure. I feel like. With that aspect ratio, it's kind of, kind of forced me to learn to you know kind of to kind of not just like set up a shot like differently, but have the intention of getting the right shot and then also, you know, using that sixteen by nine and then using it for the uh, nine by sixteen. Mm-hmm. And I think that that was hard for me at first, but I think uh, you know, I think it's like practice essentially. Yeah, you figure out your system and like yeah, same same with me. Like when I first started doing a lot of nine by sixteens for clients. Um, I would shoot it horizontally and then crop it in and then their, their face would take up the whole screen because I framed it for a horizontal, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you learn and you develop your systems and you kind of figure out like, okay, maybe I'll go a little wider on this shot. Mm-hmm. So if I do want to crop in, I have that option with 4k. I mean, why not? But yeah, yeah, no, I know. Depends on the, it depends on the goal, what you're looking to do. That's true. Uh, what's your favorite aspect of being a videographer? Um, the freedom, I would definitely say the freedom. Um, I love to like (coughs) wake up every day and something new. I don't have to go to an office job every day or I don't have to necessarily work with the same people every day. New, you know, new faces. I like, uh, new locations too. Yeah. You know, and I don't mind driving. I like traveling. Um, I like meeting new people. It's like exciting for me to sit people down and get them loose on camera and kind of like, cause it's like we talked about, it's a really stressful process sometimes, especially for people who aren't used to it. And I've been told that I have a really good way of kind of breaking people down and just making it like a, a calmer kind of situation rather than like this high anxiety thing. That, yeah. Like scripted almost. Yeah. And you know, people overthink it, they script it. So it's just, I always tell them like, you know, it's easier to just be, just take a breath. You know, it's just you and me talking cameras just happen to be here and just a conversation. And then that tends to loosen people up, which makes me feel really good because, you know, if I can make somebody who was feeling really negative about a situation by the end of it, realize it really wasn't that bad. I, that's an accomplishment for me. So that's, that's probably one of my favorite parts of doing it. I mean, you helped me out a lot too. Like, cause I was the first, I think one of the first podcasts I've ever been featured on. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was like refreshing for me. And then you kind of made it like, you know, comfortable for me to just have a conversation and then Russ too. shout out to Russ. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like I think, that was like a pretty awesome experience. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's it's tough. And I mean, like even for me, like I respect what you're doing because like you said, like you're putting yourself out of your comfort zone. And we were talking about like you have to do all the cameras, the lighting, the prep, the conversation. Like it's a lot. So okay. to put yourself out of that comfort zone, even as the creator, helps you be better in that light for your clients, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Let's get into freelancing and also comparing that to like owning a business. What made you decide to own a business rather than be a freelancer i was young i didn't i didn't know what to do so like i said 2019 i went full-time freelance and um i knew for taxes and for legal purposes i needed to like kind of create an entity um but i took guidance from people who didn't know what what the hell they were talking about and um, (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. i know i should have but and um yeah so you know looking back on it i definitely would have changed a lot um it's for me personally, like if I was talking to like myself as a 19 year old who's looking to start a business, get into freelance, um, quit like a nine to five style job, um, I would definitely say get your get your feet wet first, like figure out you have a client base. Like for me, it was weddings. So like I did a lot of weddings and then I did like depositions on the side. So I just show up and film lawyers talking. It paid the bills, but there was no creative aspect to it. Oh, so yeah. I really wanted to do something that was bigger than myself and create an entity and maybe, you know, work collaboratively. Yeah. yeah, tell stories, but more importantly, like bring people on and create like um, create something. And I opened it up as and again, I had no idea of like how any of it worked. I opened it up as an S Corp and then I didn't register it with the IRS as an S Corp. Oh. 
So for like a couple of years, it was really difficult to like get that tax situation figured out. And like all the legal stuff was really tricky for me. That makes me nervous. I mean, only because like I just opened up my business in May. So I'm still trying to figure the, you know, all that stuff out. Yeah. Um, it's not easy. I mean, we're creatives. We're not accountants. We're not tax people. Exactly. So I would just say hire somebody. Like that's the biggest thing. Like I, I wanted to just like my margins were thin. I wanted to just save as much money as possible so that I could like pay myself on the back end to keep doing, buying more gear, doing more jobs. Yeah. Um, I would have rather saved or I would have rather spent the 200 or 500, whatever it was for an accountant and a tax guy uh, rather than still be dealing with the repercussions of it today. Yeah. So, I mean, those are the things you learn like when you, you're you young and you're you're going in business. You got to fail and you got to like fuck up. But at the same time, like like we talked about, like if there's cheat codes, then yeah. you just you learn from other people and, and other people are there to help you. You're not just there to do it yourself. And then you can so. avoid an entire problem that, you know, someone else has faced. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they do it every day. And I think a lot of it comes from, for me, was ego. Like I wanted to just do something myself. I wanted to oh, start yeah. up myself. <laughs> talk to a lot of business owners and a lot of them said don't go in with a partner because it gets tricky and you know never do business with family and um i don't know i think you know as i've evolved like i've definitely learned that like my next goal my next system is to get a team get people who are like-minded who understand yeah. like what are uh, we all have a, a similar goal mm-hmm. um who take it seriously and, and give a shit about the craft so um it's hard to actually i learned a lot from the guys over at namra um it's really they've told me it's really hard to grow yourself obviously because you only have only so much you can do. yeah you only have two hands 24 hours in a day but say you have three people now you have what is that six hands and yeah. then you have <laughs> you know 24 times three right like you have all these extra hours now so you can multiply and multiply so much quicker um so that's one thing that i definitely would have changed it's funny that you mentioned um like working you know like let's say like i'm starting a business and i started with someone else um, I've been listening to other podcasts, and one thing that I realized was, like, let's say we start a business, but we go in different directions in the sense of, like, we, we have different paces mm-hmm. with the, you know, the amount of work that we do. Like, let's say I finish an edit faster than you do, and then because of that, like, I'm telling you to hurry up, mm-hmm. there's conflict. Mm-hmm. What's your opinion about, like, I guess that? Like, I could see why people say don't start a business with someone else. But at the same time, you're also kind of financially saving yourself. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, it's all about sacrifice. And I think everybody's good at different things. Um, and I think it's it's about the type of leader you are, too. Like, if you're going to step into a leadership position, you have to be ready to work with other people and yeah. how they work for themselves. And just because you do something one way and somebody does something another, like, it can be frustrating sometimes because you're like, why don't they just do it the same way that I do it? But I've learned, like... It's not always. No one's going to do something the same way you are. That's true. Um, Everybody wants this shit done their way and they think it's the best way to do it. And again, that goes back to ego. Oh, yeah. So for me, yeah, it's all about what type of a leader you are and being able to work with other people's just personas. Um, And like everybody should have a job, in my opinion. Like, you know, like say. Like a role. Yeah. Like say you and me go into business together. Like I would go into business with somebody who would take uh like who's better at my downfalls like who like say like i'm for me i really dislike the editing part i just i personally don't like it i like being out in the field i like thinking bigger picture um editing is really important though and it has to get done and it it creates the video so you have to work with somebody who's better at that than you are and Mm -hmm. sometimes you gotta like kind of take a back seat and let them do the work you hired them to do that's true that's true um let me see so for your business where do you see it going within the next like for 2023 yeah so i've decided for weddings because most of the work that i do now this year i've evolved from weddings into commercial work i have a good amount of commercial clients i have some retainer clients that i work regularly with which is awesome Um, so that's really helped me build the ability to do like more um, with less time i guess or just with less in general um so i've decided to take a back seat with the weddings this year i haven't booked a single wedding because Yeah, well, it was a hard decision because last year, you know, I had a good amount of weddings or I guess this year in the past season, had a good amount of weddings, less than I had had previous years um, because I did want to kind of focus more on like the like, some you know, a different type of work. Yeah. Focus more on like the building of the business. So haven't taken a single client this year, um, working with um, some potential team members to build up a business that 
I'm proud to be a part of and that I think would be really successful because the business that I've built over the last few years was really just me learning yeah. and developing who I was. And still, I mean, obviously I'm learning and developing, but I've kind of gotten to a space where like I'm ready to take it to the next level. Yeah, take it to the next level. And it's um, it's difficult to do that with just yourself. Oh, that's true. I, uh, I totally relate. Yeah. What do you, what about you? Where do you think uh, Real Envision, the podcast, give me, you know, the rundown of everything. Real Envision. So I'm still, you know, building it, but I think I want to continue to, you know, work with businesses, not just in Boston, um, but expand on that. And luckily I'm actually gaining some clients in Orlando. So I'm super excited to be filming over there. I have two clients lined up already and they're, you know, they're restaurant related, but I definitely see real envision at some point i guess expanding beyond that like i would love to i would love to either create a film or even be part of a larger production like even if i'm just contracting i mm -hmm. think i want to just learn and to really get into that field like i think i'm ready for the next step mm -hmm. um because there's always room for growth you know and i mean for now like that's what uh that's what i'm envisioning Good. Yeah, that's the real envision right there. Oh yeah. Real talk. <laughs> yeah that was awful. That was awful. Get cut cut that out. Yeah, I'm, we'll I'm, cut just that out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is there any skills that you want to learn for next year? Uh one big goal that I told myself this year was that I was gonna get in front of a group and I actually want to talk to you about this. Get in front of a group and public speak. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe to youth or something like that. Didn't get to it this year because I'm just busy, but the plan I, I have plans to do it in January to have a youth group come in and give them kind of like a hands-on um, like demo of just how to like use a camera, like maybe put them in front of a green screen and just like show them like how to, you know, like, like how to key and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, that's one of my first goals moving into the new year for sure. Besides growing the business. It's awesome, man. Um, that's one thing that I've been trying to improve upon, which is like public speaking. I've spoken at two different high schools, well, technically three, but one of them was like virtual. So I don't really count it. Um, so essentially like when I would speak at these high schools, I'd be a part of a panelist group and each person was in a different career, you know, different field. And I'd always be like the videographer or what have you, but it was always cool to like, I guess, share my story to, you know, teenagers mm -hmm. cause you know, they're involved with media and they're involved with like the current stage of being a creator mm -hmm. and to actually meet someone was kind of. I've met some pretty cool kids, like just being like, oh, like I want to be a videographer now. So like that's probably like one of my best feelings is to actually inspire at least one kid. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, I agree for sure. I think it's funny. Like I was talking to one of the teachers that I'm looking to get, um, you know, to speak with their class, and she was saying like everybody in the school is like the career, like you know, career day. Like what do you want to be is when you grow up, they, they say content creator. Like how funny is that? Like that firefighter or a policeman were like when I was in school, what people wanted to do or yeah, whatever. And then now it's, so now it's like, I want to be a model. I want to be a content creator. So that shit is fucking crazy to me to think that like, they're so influenced in that space. And yeah. like, like it's, 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 it's crazy because like when we were kids, we didn't have that perspective. And we like, as we aged grew, grew, grew into, into that it. with the technology. Now yeah. these kids are born in with all this technology <laughs> yeah, yeah and they're maybe i mean maybe they're feeling like they got to catch up and that's why they're like oh the cool thing to do is be a content creator because it seems like you get rich and you get you know yeah whatever. it seems like once you're a content creator you just get to the top yeah whole, they think you made it's it a whole, it's a whole process it is it is and it's ne it's never ending um that's so, true so yeah i don't know i think it's really cool that like i'm in i like i have a job that kids nowadays want to have yeah um and i was a kid that wanted to have this someday and it's crazy to me thinking at like 23 that i was able to build a well, system to build yeah and so like you know just freelancing and having the ability to create your own schedule and work with the people you want to work with and not be you know like held to a strict schedule yeah. um so i think like those are the biggest things that i would tell people um looking into like getting into that industry is like you got to understand that it's not all glitter and glamour and it's not like it's like i just point and shoot a camera like you have to really learn the skills and the foundational knowledge first Settings, like for every one thing you learn there's another there's another step to it and that's the thing about filmmaking in general is that you're like nobody knows everything like you haven't seen every film ever made you haven't used every technique you haven't mastered every technique 
ever. Like even the greatest of greats have net, like they don't know everything. So that's what I love. It's a endless industry of potential. of learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then I remember a, a question that I wanted to ask you earlier because we were talking about getting, because you mentioned that you wanted to really get more hands-on um, with like being on set and like building actual like films. Um, and then I remember the question I wanted to ask you was, have you ever been on set or have you ever worked as like a PA or anything like that in formal production? I have been on a couple of sets. For example, there's a videographer named Trev. He works with John Lucas. Mm -hmm. shout, out to, shout out to Trev and Limitless, because that's his company. Um, he was kind of the first person to allow me to at least be a behind the scenes photographer for the bigger sets. So I've been on one set with him, which was for the music video ADHD from mm -hmm. Jonah Lucas. Oh, wow. I so didn't that know was, that actually. So that was a That's pretty dope. cool, that was a cool experience. And it was funny. I actually ended up being in a music video for like a second. For real? Yeah. You got to play that right now. Play it on the, <laughs> play it over B-roll. Like, well, <laughs> so it was literally a, um, I was a student and I didn't think I was going to be in a video because they needed one more person. I'm like, oh, I'll be in it. Yeah. Well, and I'm <laughs> in it for like a split second. Damn. Um, and I, I'll never forget that day because I was also growing my hair, so I look kind of like it was. It was in an awkward phase. Yeah. I'm like, oh gosh, I look so Looking bad like in the video. <laughs> but um, like you know, being in that environment was like really cool. I wasn't really so involved, but I was taking like some videos and behind the scenes photos, and nice. it was cool to be in that type of setting. And that's something I want to continue to be a part of. You know what I mean? It's really fast paced. You learn so much. There's like terms I'm like still learning. Oh yeah, dude. But There's like, like weird I feel terms. Dumb. Like, like for example, when I that was the first time I learned sticks. I'm like, what's sticks? Yeah. And I go, oh, a tripod. I'm like, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, like I can't remember what it's called now, but there are like clothes pins. It's called like a C32 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck? Why is a clothes pin called a C32? Or uh, there's just so many other like weird terms for like lighting and um, just like extension cords. Like there, you, you have it's to like know. different terminology. It's like you, you kind of step out of like what you know. Yeah, for sure. And it's like it's it makes you realize that there's tiers, there's levels to this shit because like you're doing your stuff, your your work every day, and you're like doing your process, but then you see a director who's getting paid like Millions multiple dollars. thousands of dollars just to be on set for the day. Mm -hmm. And like, they're just directing, they're not touching a camera. They're not doing anything. And it's real for me. I really love just being a sponge and just like looking at the way a director would direct or like move things around or like Speak how the DP people. would move the cameras to convey a different message. And um, that for me was really cool to be on and just get your ass beat a little bit. Like as a PA, yeah. like, you know, run coffees, do bitch work. Like you got to do it. Yeah, PA, PA work isn't really my favorite. Oh, I fucking hate I, PA work. I can't stand it at all, to be honest. But but it's do, one of those things that puts you out of the comfort zone. That too, that too. Um, so yeah, that's, I want to get into larger productions. But other than that, I've been in like another music video shoot with Trev. Um, and I was for like one of Joyner's sign artists, I believe. It was, I think, right before the pandemic, so it's been a while. Mm -hmm. But I want to continue to, you know, get involved in the, that type of setting. Yeah, yeah. I love, like, doing music shoots and stuff like that. I've never done a music video. I've done a lot of live concerts before. I love um, concerts. But, yeah, live, live music is really cool. You get so creative with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you have anything else to tell the audience? Uh, no, that's... It's pretty much it, man. I think we had a really good conversation and I appreciate you bringing me out here to just kind of get to know me. Um, this was the first time that I've ever been a guest on a podcast. I've done really? hundreds of interviews for other people, but this is the first time that I've uh, gotten questions back to me. So it was a really good experience and I appreciate you giving it to me. Of course, man. Thanks. You're always welcome. Thanks for uh, coming by. I just want to give a special shout out to Duran from Avaria for allowing us to film here. And uh, yeah, thanks, just Thanks, Justin, for coming by. It was awesome to have you here. And uh, looking forward to see the work you have coming out for next year and, you know, continue to collaborate and work together. Man, my pleasure, man. I'm looking forward to yeah, still Thanks, working man. with you, man. Appreciate you. Before we uh, end the show, where can people find you? Yeah, so you can uh, find me directly on Instagram. It's jmurray.visual and uh, mostly just use Instagram. But I have uh, my portfolio on there, my website, and you can kind of check out a lot of my work from those links. So that's probably the best place to send them. Well, again, thanks for coming by, and uh, it's been awesome having you here. Chris, my pleasure, man. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to working with you next year. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.